Now let's begin the modeling with statistics class week 4. Today we are going to talk about distribution or variance. I want you to fully understand what distribution or variance is and how, you, how to use those index to see the characteristics of a dataset. Okay, let's review what we have learned so far. I introduced four basic approaches to see the characteristics of a data or data set. Ratio, distribution or variance, and value of the data, and trend. This week, we are going to focus on the distribution or variance. This is one of the four approaches and I'm sure most of you are not familiar with this index and the concept. So I want you to be get familiar. I want you to familiarize you, yourself with the distribution and the variance. Okay, let's look at the chart we observed last week. We have three groups, and they, each group has its own average and the median. But those index, like average, cannot show the, the original data distribution, which you are looking at. For example, group one has the mountain-shaped distribution, while the group two has V-shaped or U-shape distribution, and group three has the downward trend like this. Until you see this illustration or graph, you never know how the original data distributed. So this is also important factor to show the, how the data looks like and what the characteristics of the data uh, uh, which the data has. Now let's talk about data variance or distribution. This is a, a definition of the variance. Variance is the amount of dispersion or spread of a data set. What does it mean? Let's look at the chart below. Let's see, this is a seesaw, well balanced on the average. Average is a point, you can say it's a balancing point, the point the seesaw keep the balance on both sides. And the red circle, red dot, represents the, each single data. If you take an average, the seesaw keep the balance. So you have to see, you, you can understand where is the average if you calculate the average of the data set. But if you look at the each single data, for example, left hand side, you have a red dot far from the average. On the other hand, you, ha you can see more dots on the right hand side than the left hand side. So this spread or this dispersion represents the data distribution or variance in a data set. So each data has a variance in terms of the distance from the average. So in the one group of the data, which you call the data set, you have a, a data which has large variance from average. Also, you have the data with small variance from average. You have the bunch of the variances 
in, in terms of the, the distance from the average. That's distribution or variance. So in some cases, you may not have a large variance in the data group, but in other cases, you may have very large variance. It depends on the what kind of data set you have. So the goal of today is how do you show, describe how much variance you have in a data set and how distributed the each data or the each data set has. I'd like to show you the um, very uh, um, index to show the variance or distribution, which is called standard deviation. It's Hyojun Hensa in Japanese. In order to reach the standard deviation number, you have to cal calculate variance first. In definition, variance is you take the squared distance from average of each single data and you add up all those squared distance and then you divide the total by the total number of data. So if you have 100 data in a data set, so you take the distance of each data from the, from the average in the squared and you add hundreds of times. And then once you get the total, you divide that total by hundred. That's variance. Here you are doing adding up, although this is a squared number, you are adding up all the distance, hundreds of distances of each data and then divide by the total number of data which is 100 in this case and then standard deviation is a root of variance so fundamentally what you're doing is calculating and adding all the distance between each data and average so standard deviation is simply just a root of the, the variance of the summation of the squared distances. So if you have wide range of the spread, you will have larger number of variance. At the same time, you have larger number of standard deviation. If you have smaller, narrow spread, in your data set, you will have smaller number of variance. At the same time, you have smaller number of standard deviation. So fundamentally, variance and the standard deviation has the same trend because simply the standard deviation is just a root of variance. In my class or in general, from my experience, people use standard deviation to show the distribution, how distributed the, the data is with standard deviation rather than variance. So let's focus standard deviation in my class. And how you calculate, you can follow, theoretically you can follow this formula I showed you now, but in practice it is very time consuming and then you may miscalculate. So my recommendation is to use Excel function about standard deviation. You can find the function below, which is STDEV. This is abbreviation of standard deviation. So let's use this one, followed by the range of the data. So please use which data to use on Excel and then identify where it is in in the bracket and just press the enter then 
you can immediately get the result of the standard deviation. Okay, now let's look. At, now let's look at the standard deviation from the visual viewpoint. As you can see, there are two charts. Let's look at the upper one, which has a larger distribution compared with the bottom one. The standard deviation shows the distance from average to a certain point, which is illustrated with the dotted lines. So you, um, it depends on the shape of the distribution. On the, it depends on this, the uh, some conditions, but very roughly, you can say almost two thirds of the total data is included within the range of the two dotted lines. So if you say this is the standard range of the data, you can show the distance of this range as a standard deviation. So standard deviation shows the, the distance from the average to the dotted line, which is the standard range of this data set. So this is the right hand side and then here another distant standard deviation range. This is this is the average and this is dotted line. So you have two standard deviations here. So you can say here from here to from to here, here is the standard range of the data uh, in which you have 60% of the total. Uh, da total data. So you can call it, this is a standard range and the half of them shows as a standard deviation. Again, so but you can forget about this. So you can understand the standard deviation is, re standard deviation represents the range of the data distribution. So if you have larger distribution, you may have, <coughs> you may have larger standard deviation as you can see on the, the upper chart. And in the lower chart, you have narrower distribution, which means you have smaller standard deviation. So this is a basic concept of distribution visually and standard deviation. Now let's look at a simple example to see why variance or standard deviation matters. This is a simple um, sales result data from January to December. If you look at first half of the result with average, which is 4.0. And at the same time, if you look at the average of the sales result in the second half, which is again, 4.0. If you only look at average result, you may say, hey, we have the same performance or result in both first half and the second half. Yes, that is true. That is not wrong in terms of the average. But is that all you want to know if you are a business person? Maybe not. So what else do you need? In this case, you may be aware of the variance from average of each month's result. So how can you represent, how can you show the distribution or variance from the average in each, each month? So if you take standard deviation, of the first half result, which is 0 0.2. I believe this is relatively small compared with average 4.0. But if you look at the standard deviation in the second half, which is 1.9, it is obvious if you look at the chart, but without looking at this chart, you can say, hey, in both in the first half and second half, the monthly average is the same. 
So the size of the business may not be may not be the different, but if you look at monthly balance, or you can call it risk sales risk, it's getting larger and larger. Because in the first half result, you have 0.2 standard deviation. But in the second half, you have 1.9 standard deviation. So the range of this, the distribution is 1.9. This is almost a half of the average. So you have huge variance in the second half. Yes, you can visually identify this risk if you make a chart like this. So, but this is again, it's very subjective. If you want to quantify the risk or distribution, standard deviation may work. It is very obvious because you have, you had the standard deviation of 0.2 in the first half. Why do you have 1.9, which is uh, almost the nine or almost ten, uh, nine or ten times a grow. So uh, you can do do both, uh, make, uh, calculating standard deviation and making the chart. So you can visualize the change of the distribution between the, the, the first half and the second half. At the same time, you can quantify the change of distribution by using standard deviation. So this is a very important information in terms of the performance of your business, sales business, because you have higher risk in second half than in first half. So now let's look at another chart which is which shows the distribution and this is called histogram this is a chart the histograms we saw last week about three groups again you can identify the difference of the distribution by looking at the chart like this but at the same time you can quantify the, the how distributed the, the each group is. If you calculate standard deviation of each group, you can see that the calculation result up, uh, out there. Group one has 1.8, group two has 3.5, group three, 2.6. As you can see with the chart, you can quantify the difference of the, the, the distribution Obviously, the group two has the largest standard deviation, while the group one has one the, the smallest standard deviation. So, if you have time and if you have energy, try to to make both. I mean, a histogram and standard deviation. If you want to illustrate, if you want to show the standard deviation, especially if you want to compare the distribution among some groups, data groups or data sets. So I encourage you to calculate standard deviation and to see visual and to visualize the distribution by making histogram. How to make a histogram is not that easy even with Excel. And so um, here's a link you can access to see how to make it. Okay, now let's wrap up what we have learned so far. We talked about four basic approaches, and in this week we talked about the distribution of variance. What we have learned so far in terms of the index um, are the average, a median, which we learned last week, and standard deviation which we learned this, this week. And also you already know, know about how you, um, how you describe the ratio with percentage or fraction or trend by using some graphs or growth ratio, 
which we will talk about next week. But even if you know these index and how you calculate the numbers, don't jump to the index from the beginning. Before you apply some index, the more importantly, let's let me talk about it in the next slide. Here is a key message. Using index like average, median, or standard deviation, or making some graphs are not your goal. So if you get some data or data set, don't jump to calculation of those index or making graph because this is not your goal. Your goal is to support your conclusion or messages by using those data or index. So using index or you making graph are just tools to support your goal. So please carefully think about this. Don't start calculation before using some index or graph. Think about which tool or which index or which graph to use to directly support your goal. So this is the worst case. If you get some data, okay, I would calculate all of the index, um, average, median, and standard deviation, and just put those results on, on the PowerPoint and say, hey, I've got this result. That is the worst case. Instead of doing that, Please think about this. What is the goal? What is the conclusion I have to say? And what is the message I have to deliver? And what is the best way to, to illustrate or to show my story or to support my message, uh, which index to use? If you do not need to, to use standard deviation, for example, don't use that. It's irrelevant. If you just need average, that's totally fine if it supports your conclusion. So this is very important, okay? Even if you understand how to calculate index, don't do that in the beginning. Before doing that, think about your goal or conclusion or final message and smartly choose which approach or which index or which graph is the best to use. That is a key message so far. Thank you.